What's good, everybody? It's Martin of Beer here. Welcome back to episode number 26 of the Can't Stop Progress series. We are here with Super Strong Style 16, Night 2. We've got the four quarterfinal matchups. We have a uh, number one contenders match for the Atlas Championship. We have a, uh, a little four way match. Not a four way, sorry, a uh, four versus four tag match. Uh, involving the challengers for the tag team championships, uh, the tag team champions, and just two other teams. Um, and we have to main event the show, we have a women's championship match. So we'll get straight into the show. We're back at Ali Pali in front of 3,100 people. Uh, we have, as always, Jim Smallman kicking off the show, welcoming everyone to night two and giving a quick little update. On the uh, TK Cooper injury, um, out for a month, just over a month, uh, with hip tendonitis, unfortunately, but uh, he will be back and hopefully as good as ever uh, in just over a month or so. So, probably uh, near the start of August, you'll see him back, maybe uh, mid August, uh, whichever show comes up with that. Obviously, um, came back to help Travis Banks on the previous chapter um, in the fight against British Strong Style but uh, a 28E start uh, for Jim not quite as good as his previous one but around what he normally gets as he hands the mic over to General Manager Stephen Regal who uh, announces what we're going to do uh, to replace TK Cooper uh, and that is there is going to be a 10-man battle royal uh, to determine who will replace him in the next round. You've got a lot of the competitors from night one that lost. So, um, oh, who was it? I believe it was Mark Haskins. Let's see if I've got the list here. Uh, James Drake. Ricochet. Uh, Donovan Dijak uh, has left the company, so he's not in there. Uh, Joe Coffey's in there. Jordan Devlin is in there. Matt Riddle is in there. Uh, Austin Aries is in there. And then I believe we also have uh, Zach Gibson and a couple of others. I can't remember off the top of my head, but we'll go into that now. Uh, and he, uh, Regal also announcing... Uh, the other matches I mentioned uh, a minute ago, the Atlas number one contenders match, uh, the 4v4 tag, and the women's title match. But we'll get straight in to the uh, Super Strong Style 16 main card, where in a decent match, Mark Andrews wins a battle royal in 9 minutes and 58 seconds. The other members of the final four being Zach Gibson, Ricochet and Austin Aries, with Zach Gibson being the final elimination and Matt Riddle getting the most eliminations over the course of the match. Uh, so Austin Aries, uh, James Drake, Joe Coffey, Jordan Devlin, Mark Andrews, Matt Riddle and Ricochet being the seven unlucky losers from the first night. Zach Gibson, he believes he should have been in the tournament um, he is progress number one, uh, soon to be UK's number one, obviously. Uh, he thinks he should have been in the tournament and he demands his spot uh, in the Battle Royal to find TK Cooper's replacement. Jack, Se Jack Sexsmith comes out and says, I don't think you deserve to be in it. I should be in that match because he is progress. He's uh, come through. Uh, the Pro Joe, um, he was unfortunate to just miss out on uh, the Natural Progression Series Championship, uh, and he wants to prove that he can compete with the best in the company. And then following that, out comes Damien Dunn, saying, Sexsmith, you're a joke, you don't deserve to be uh, anywhere near this, if anyone deserves it, I do. Regal decides... All three of them can get in the match, uh, make it a nice 10 man battle royal, which is eventually won by Mark Andrews. 
Damien Dunn improving his performance skills. James Drake and Jack Sexsmith improving their rumble skills. As we get a 56 C minus match to uh, kick us off, which is very good indeed. And with that, Mark Andrews later on in the night will face off against Tyler Bate uh, in that quarterfinal match. It will be the uh, the, the last sem uh, last, uh, last quarterfinal, not semi-final. It'll be the last quarterfinal of the night, the match before the women's championship main event, just to give uh, Andrews a bit of time to recover from this battle royal. As we get into our first quarterfinal match of the night, we have Mark Haskins versus Shah Samuels, and in a decent match. Mark Haskins defeats Shah Samuels in 15 minutes and 18 seconds by submission. Unfortunately, Haskins and Shah didn't seem to click and it made for an awkward bout, but a 54C, still a very good rating uh, considering. Haskins getting an in-ring performance of 59, Shah Samuels getting a 38. So two decent performances there by, uh, by these two. Haskins uh, carrying the match a little bit, but... Uh, Shah with still a respectable rating there uh, with a 38. No improvements, unfortunately, but a good quarterfinal to start off with. Following that, we have the very exciting match of Flamita versus Leo Rush, where in a bout that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Leo Rush defeats Flamita in 13 minutes and 58 seconds by pinfall with a rush hour. Flamita and Leo Rush have great chemistry, showed in their performances, which is always nice to see and two very good ratings Flamita with an in-ring performance of 60 and Leo Rush with a 56 no work improvements unfortunately but a 62c match rating is uh, brilliant for these two guys I think Flamita um, like Leo Rush is still quite young um, and both very quick very good sort of uh, cruiserweights and um, flippy dudes luchadors really Following that, we do have that Atlas number one contenders match where the pride of Wales, Eddie Dennis, defeats Rob Lynch in 14 minutes and 25 seconds by pinfall with the next stop driver. Uh, Eddie Dennis with an in-ring performance of 26, not the best, but Rob Lynch with a 46, uh, which isn't too bad. No work improvements, unfortunately, and Eddie Dennis is your new number one contender for the Atlas Championship. Uh, 43D match is okay, considering those involved. Obviously not up to the uh, standard of the rest of the cards so far, but um, Eddie Dennis just unfortunately in this mod, just not where he should be, really, and um, just not improving. But uh, I wanted to do something with him, so uh, he'll have a chance to face off against Volta for the Atlas Championship. Um, that won't be on night three. That will actually be on the next chapter, uh, which I believe will be chapter 67. Uh, obviously, the three nights of Super Strong Style count as a chapter, which will be chapter 66. So in chapter 67, Eddie Dennis will be facing off against Volta. Uh, 67 actually will be the World Cup, which I think counts as a chapter number. So uh, on the World Cup card, well, night one or night two of the World Cup card, Eddie Dennis will be facing off against Volta. Following on from that match, Eddie Dennis, he cuts a promo uh, about him going full-time, quitting his job as a uh, head teacher, and uh, he wants to uh, follow on from that by winning the title, uh, the Atlas Championship. So 25E, not the best, but again, Eddie Dennis really uh, underrated on this mod. Following on from that match, and after the half-time interval, we have the 4 versus 4 tag match, where CCK and Sweet Jesus face off against British Strong Style and the Dazzler team. And in a bout that had decent wrestling, but not a lot of heat unfortunately, CCK and Sweet Jesus defeat British Strong Style and the Dazzler team in 12 minutes and 51 seconds, when Kid Lycos defeats Old Black Jr. by pinfall with a sliced bread. Daryl Allen unfortunately off his game and All Black Jr. unfortunately uh, sustaining a injury, a displaced olecranon fracture. I have no idea what that is, but it's probably not too good. Uh, Eva 
getting a 44, Mambo getting a 34, Lycos with a impressive 55, Chris Brooks with a 41, Earl Black Jr. with a 36, Daryl Allen with a 35, Trent Seven with a 50, and Clint Marguerre with a 42. Daryl Allen improving his performance skills, and Earl Black Jr. actually improving his rumble and his performance skills. Um, pretty much the only two guys that I wouldn't have minded not getting improvements. Um, they're kind of just here to to put the other guys over. Um, but a 49D plus match rating there. Uh, British Strong Style leaving the Dazzler team to take the loss, deciding they, they just want to keep up. Uh, they don't want to risk getting hurt before their title defence tomorrow night. Um, so CCK picking up the momentum heading into that title match. Uh, I think that's still Clint Margera. We'll ignore that. Uh, Earl Black Jr. getting his injury. Chuck Mambo with the uh, mistake that causes injury. Uh, so there'll be a bit of uh, a problem between those two, but hopefully everyone will be able to uh, put up with it. Following that, we have our next quarterfinal match, where in a belt that had good wrestling, sorry, great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Zack Sabre Jr. defeats Marty Skrull in 13 minutes and 4 seconds by submission with a senior stretch. Zack Sabre Jr. is still not suited to his gimmick. We do need to sort that out at some point. Um, Marty Skrull with an in-ring performance of 63 to Zack Sabre Jr.'s 76. Zack Sabre Jr. improving his performance skills and a nice 73 B- match rating. I think, uh, I think that's our best match rating so far. And actually comes off a mistake because Marty Skrull was supposed to win this match. But... Uh, <laughs> Turns out Zack Sabre Jr. is heading to the next round uh, of Super Strong Style. So uh, Zack Sabre Jr. making his way to the semi-finals and Marty Skrull going out to his former tag partner. Following on from that, we have the redemption match for Mark Andrews against Tyler Bate. We're in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Tyler Bate defeats Mark Andrews in 15 minutes and 27 seconds by pinfall with the Tyler Driver 97. Bate with an in-ring performance of 61 to Mark Andrews 57. Uh, Mark Andrews getting his chance at redemption by winning that battle royal, but unfortunately uh, took too much out of him and he wasn't quite able to defeat Tyler Bate here. So Tyler Bate goes into the semi-finals to face off against Zack Sabre Jr. while Mark Haskins will face Leo Rush in the next round. And following on from this match, we have that women's championship match. We're in a bout that had decent wrestling, but not a lot of heat. Laura Di Matteo defeats Ginny in 14 minutes and 14 seconds by submission to regain her progress of women's title that was ripped from her hands when Ginny just beat her so that she couldn't continue uh, back a couple of months ago. Uh, Laura getting her revenge. Uh, getting an in-ring performance of 41 to Ginny's 47. No work improvements, unfortunately, but a 48 D-plus match rating to finish us off. And then Laura celebrating with the title to end off the show. And now because of that, our match, uh, our show rating is a 54 C-, minus, which is still a very, very good show, but uh, could have been a lot better if we uh, changed the matches around a bit. But... I don't want to just sort of cheese everything for the ratings. I want to book it how it would be booked in real life, I think. And um, like they did in real life uh, this year, the women's title match should go on ahead of just a quarter final for the tournament. Um, obviously, if we'd have put Zack Sabre Jr., if we'd have swapped the Zack Sabre Jr. skull match with the, uh, with the women's championship match, we probably would have got over a 60 probably high 60s uh, for show rating but I want to keep it realistic to how it would be done um, and it's still a very very good uh, show rating and after that show we are going to uh, be praising Zack Sabre Jr Marty Skrull and Flamita for their very impressive performances in that show everyone's happy with that uh, as we 
end of the, the show and the episode. We'll have a quick look to see how long um, Earl Black Jr. is out for, uh, assuming that he is out. Uh, if we have a look, Tyler Bate wants uh, a reduced schedule. Earl Black Jr. is injured, so let's have a quick look at that. 50 days, um, not too bad, considering he's not a major part of our show, so we can deal with him being out for a bit. Um, if we have a quick look here, as we see that Ashley Sabera, which is Dana Brooke, is uh, becoming good friends with Enzo Amore. Uh, so quite interesting to see there. Uh, our pivot share deal is running out, so we're going to have to negotiate a new deal for our events. Shaw Samuels has left the company. Rob Lynch has left the company. Weird, because I thought I'd given him a new contract. We'll have to look into bringing him back soon. Uh, Trent Seven's contract is down to the last month. For some reason, I'm uh, shortlisting Chavo Guerrero. Um, not entirely sure why, but he has signed a contract, or he's potentially signing a new contract extension with Future Underground. And Martin Stone, or Danny Birch, uh, has relocated to Central British Isles. So he might be someone we look to in the future. But that is night two of Super Strong Style out of the way. We've just got one night left to go, the uh, the final night. Comment down below who you think is going to win Super Strong Style this year. Is it going to be Mark Haskins, Leo Rush, Tyler Bate or Zack Sabre Jr.? Let me know and we'll see if you're right in the next episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.